I'm Martin Polyakov. I'm one of the professors here in the School of Chemistry at the University of Nottingham. And my field of research is green chemistry, cleaner ways of making molecules. This is my object. It's a small high pressure valve. And my research is involved in two different strands which come together. The first one is replacing the solvents that we use in chemical reactions, usually in my case with high pressure carbon dioxide, which is environmentally much more sustainable than using the usual petroleum products that are conventionally used by chemists as solvents. And the second aspect of my work is doing reactions continuously, that is pumping chemicals in over a catalyst so the reactants turn to products and then releasing the pressure and getting out the products at the end. And you control the flow of such chemicals with a little valve like this. You have the valve body, the pipe going in, pipe coming out. It says org because it's had an organic compound flowing through it. This is an old valve which has stopped working, can't be repaired easily, so we're not actually wasting anything by putting it in the time capsule. But on the other hand, it's something that's really quite symbolic of my work. Now, the relevance in a hundred years' time is a different question. If all my hopes are realised, green chemistry, the cleaner ways of making chemicals, will be seen as the norm. All chemistry will be done like that. And I hope that this will be seen as quite a pioneering exercise. On the other hand, if it all fails, this will be seen as a monument to my stupidity. But either way, it will be quite fun. The thing that I'd really like to see is chemists being able to design molecules with particular properties. At the moment, chemists very often have to fiddle around with the structures of molecules experimentally to get what they want. I think that the real breakthrough is going to come maybe soon, maybe in 50 years' time, when chemists can fiddle around on paper or perhaps on their computer and design a molecule and know that when they make it, it will have the properties they want. I think the first message for the person who opens it up is to congratulate them on surviving. There's really some discussion now whether the human race is going to make it for another hundred years because of all the challenges of sustainability, whether we'll be able to feed our population, whether we'll be wiped out by disease. The second thing is to sympathise, because I'm sure that for somebody in a hundred years' time will be faced with challenges just as big or perhaps even bigger than we're being faced now and just to tell them to have faith that if they're still alive in a hundred years time we will have done something quite useful and therefore they can do the same for the generation that will be a hundred years after them. One has to be realistic only a few people are going to make astounding discoveries but it's a bit like gambling when you buy a lottery ticket you don't know whether you're going to be the winner or not but you know that if you don't buy a ticket, you definitely can't be a winner. And so I think that most scientists, in their hearts at least, are working towards a vision of a future which is better than what exists today. And many of our contributions will turn out not to be useful in realising that vision, but together we can do it. Goodbye. I think the time capsule is great and quite like to have it in my office but there's no space and my office won't be here in 200 years time. So, goodbye.